30 percent okay of their time majority do not work because the government has got no capability to make them work. all right um thank you very much dr patrick wakeda will now take a view Prayers. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favor these your servants, whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trusts in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them here assembled and grant that they may, as in your presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as promote your honor and glory and address the good of those whose interests you have committed to their charge. Amen. Amen. Proclamation by the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament of Uganda. Whereas His Excellency, the President has under Article 101, Clause 2 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda, indicated to the Speaker his intention to address parliament and the nation on the national budget for, nine, for financial year 2022-2023. Aware that the financial year 2021-2022 will end on the 30th day of June 2022. Noting that it's important that 
the president addresses parliament and the nation on the national budget for the financial year 2022-2023. Now, therefore, in the exercise of the powers conferred upon the speaker by Article 95 Clause 2 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda and Rule 17.1 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament of Uganda, I hereby proclaim that Parliament shall sit at Kololo Independence Ground on Tuesday 14th, June 2022 at 14 hours to receive the address of His Excellency, the President, on the national budget for the financial year 2022-2023. And the Kololo Independence Ground to be the precincts of Parliament for the above mentioned purpose, given under my hand at Parliament House, Kampala on 27th day of May, 2022. Anita Anit Amon, Speaker of Parliament. Communication from the Chair. <coughs> Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, and Mama Janet Museveni, and the First Lady, and also the Minister of Education and Sports, Your Excellency, the Vice President, His Lordship, the Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker, His Lordship, the Chief Justice, the Vice Chairperson of NRM, the Right Honorable Prime Minister and Leader of Government Business in Parliament, the Leader of Opposition in Parliament, Cabinet Ministers and Ministers of State, my colleagues, the Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and High Commissioners, leaders of political parties, all public servants present, the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to today's sitting in the parliament, whose main objective is to receive the budget speech for the financial year 2022-2023. As you may recall, when we gathered here a week ago, that was on 7th June 2022, to receive the State of Nation address, we adjourned the House to today, 14th June 2022, for a purpose of receiving this budget speech. Preparation of the budget is a constitutional obligation of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, imposed under Article 155, Clause 1 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, which states that the president shall cause to be prepared and laid before parliament in each financial year, but in any case, not later than the 15th day before the commencement of the financial year. Estimates of revenue and expenditure of the government for the next financial year. The budget speech that we are going to receive today is a, a culmination of the budget formulation and approval process, which began with a budget call circular for the financial year 2022-2023 issued on 15th of September 2021, and that is in line with the Section 9.3 of the Public Finance Management Act 2025. Parliament received and considered the National Budget Framework Paper for financial year 2022-2023, 2026-2027, in accordance to Section 95 
and eight of the Public Finance, Man Public Finance Management Act 2025. Your Excellency, the ministries, departments, and agencies submitted their ministerial policy statements for financial year 2022-2023 in accordance with the section 13, 13, 13 of the Public Finance Management Act. The ministerial policy statements were considered together with the budget estimates of 2022-2023 which culminated in two passing of the appropriation bill 2022, and we must thank you for signing the appropriation bill. Honorable members, the budget speech is a Minister of Finance statement on the overall budget policy of the executive for the forthcoming year and a summary of the key budget policy proposals. The importance of the budget process is anchored in the legislative, philosophical, and historical power of the pursuit that is provided under Article 156 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda. The power of appropriation denotes the constitutional mandate of the legislature to authorize the expenditure of the public money for a purpose of proposed, for purpose proposed by the executive. This authority is elaborated under chapter nine of the constitution, specifically article 152 to article 159 that are operationalized by the Public Finance Management Act 2015. Indeed, the exercise of this power is manifested in the appropriation of the appropriation by, as a mandate of parliament. Budget implementation will commence on 1st July 2022. I urge you all the eligible account officers to ensure that value for money in whatever expenditure is as per approved budget. I call upon all the accounting officers to be accountable for all the resources brought under their charge in line with the Article 164 of the Constitution of Republic of Uganda. In this regard, I reiterate the commitment of the 11th Parliament to effectively play our oversight role in examining the economy, economy's efficiency and effectiveness in the expenditure of public funds. The budget, the budget reading process offers the country and citizens an opportunity to know the government priorities for the next financial year. It forms as it informs us of how the desired revenue will be raised and forms of based upon which the accounting officers or implementing authorities shall be held responsible. I therefore urge all of you to listen attentively so that you can be able to move together as we listen to the budget speech. Honorable members, once more, with the today being a very important day, where the budget is going to be read, I urge you all of you, after the budget reading, to go to your constituencies for two weeks to monitor the implementation and the preparatory activities of the parish development model so as to ensure its success. A lot of money has been channeled to your constituencies and it is only upon the leadership to ensure the success of that money. So we will go and monitor that for two weeks. Honorable members, 
as we start the second session of this parliament, we shall dedicate the first meeting to consider bills. The second meeting to consider reports, petitions, motions, and the third meeting to consider the budget process. This time round, we must start the budget process early. I therefore urge you the executive to table in the bills enumerated in the address of the State of Nation by His Excellency, the President, as quickly as possible so that they can be handled expeditiously. I also wish to remind the chairpersons to ensure that these bills are presented in the House as soon as possible so that we pass these bills. And it is through these bills that we are able to legislate well. Finally, honorable colleagues, the leadership has organized a three-day induction workshop for members of 11th Parliament from 15th to 17th, June 2022, at Imperial Royal Hotel. I urge all of you to attend the sessions of this important workshop. We no longer want an excuse that we're not trained. So the training is on. I want to thank you all and thank you for coming. Item number five, presentation of the budget speech. Your Excellency, it is my great pleasure to invite you or your delegate to present the budget speech. Your Excellency, please. Speaker, can I remove my mask? Please go ahead and remove, but first sanitize. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Mama, the First Lady and the Minister for Education and Sports, Your Excellency, the Vice President, Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, your Lordship, the Chief Justice, the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Your Lordship, the Deputy Chief Justice, the Vice Chairman of the NRM Party, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Ministers, Honorable, Honorable Members of Parliament, your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and Heads of Diplomatic Missions, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Madam Speaker, in His Excellency the President, to present to Parliament 
The budget for the financial 2022-2023. My statement today will, hi will highlight the budget as approved by Parliament on the 20th of May 2022. Right Honorable Speaker, on the 20th March 2022, we lost a gallant son, the Speaker of this August House, the late Right Honorable Jacobo Lokri Oranya. I beg and request that once more we observe a unit of silence in this memory. May his soul rest in eternal peace. <laughs> On us, the NRM government's overriding goal is to achieve social economic transformation for the benefit of all Ugandans, thus improving their lives. We must therefore quickly accelerate the economic recovery that we began in financial year 2021-22, integrate more Ugandans into the money economy, and speed up growth in the country's productive sectors. Madam Speaker, the theme of the budget for financial 22-23 is therefore full monetization of Uganda's economy through commercial agriculture, industrialization, expanding and broadening services, digital transformation, and market access. This theme summarizes our budget strategy and a priority that I will later elaborate. The theme is in line with that of the East African community, which is accelerating economic recovery and enhancing productive sectors for improved livelihoods. Madam Speaker, to achieve Uganda's social economic transformation, the NRM has resolved to pursue the following goals in the forthcoming year and the medium term. One, kickstart the process of getting the household still engaged in subsistence into the money economy. Two, support businesses and the overall economy to recover from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and restore the lost jobs and livelihoods. And three, finally, protect households from rising prices of food, fuel, and other essential commodities using prudent economic policies. Madam Speaker, to achieve these goals, the following key strategic action will be undertaken. One, maintain peace, security, and stability, which jointly are the foundation of all of all, of, of all other government, business, and household plans. Two, full implementation of the parish development model to accelerate the transition of the 39% of households still engaged in the subsistence economy into the money economy. Three, step up implementation of the relief and the recovery funds to support the recovery of businesses and restore the lost jobs and livelihoods. These relief funds include the Small Business Recovery Fund, the Mioga Fund, the Microfinance Credit to Circles, the Uganda Development Bank, the Uganda Development Corporation, Date and the Equity Funds, respectively. Implement appropriate fiscal and monetary policies to mitigate the impact of price shocks on the well-being of owner Ugandans without causing long-term distortion in the economy. Enhance investment in infrastructure to facilitate increased production, value addition, and national regional market success and entry. Madam Speaker, 
in this budget statement, I will do the following. One, I will report on the performance of the economy and review our future economic prospects. Two, I will provide progress in the implementation of the development programs that we promised the people of Uganda during the last financial year, which is ending by end of this month. And the priorities for the next financial year, 22-23. Three, highlight the revenue and expenditure framework for the next financial year, 22-23, as approved by Parliament. Recent economic performance and outlook. Madam Speaker, I now wish to give highlights on the performance of the economy and the accountability for the measures I announced in the financial year 21-22 budget. The details can be found in the background to the budget of 22-23, which has been published. Economic growth. Madam Speaker, the size of our economy is projected to expand to shillings 162.1 trillion for the financial year ending 30th June this year. This is equivalent to US dollars, 45.7 billion. Economic activity has been more buoyant at the, at the growth rate of 4.6% per annum, up from 3.5% of last year. This shows that the economy is on a path to full recovery from the COVID-19 disruptions. Mm. <laughs> Madam Speaker, with this buoyant recovery and the resilience of the economy, induced by our deliberate and prudent economic policies, Uganda's GDP per capita has increased to US dollars 1,046 in the current prices, which is equivalent to Uganda shillings 3.7 million per person per year. Madam Speaker, the service sector is expected to grow by 3.8% up from 2.8% growth last financial year. This is on an account of continued recovery in the wholesale and retail trade, education and tourism services, coupled with growth in real estate activities and ICT. The services sector is projected to contribute 41.5% to our GDP. The industrial sector is expected to grow by 5.4%, up from 3.5% growth the last financial year largely on account of recovery in manufacturing, construction activities. The industrial sector is projected to contribute 26.8% to our GDP. The agriculture sector is expected to grow by 4.3%, largely as a result of growth in food and cash crop production, livestock, as well as recovery in fishing. This is the same rate at which the agriculture sector grew Last year, the sector contributed 24.1% to the total economic output. Now I turn to prices. Madam Speaker, in the second half of the financial year 2021-2022, however, there has been a significant increase in the prices for some of the essential commodities and services. These include laundry soap, bar soap, petrol, and the diesel, cooking oil, some food crops items such as wheat, sugar, potatoes, and onions. Educational services and building materials such as cement and steel have also experienced price increases. As a result, the overall inflation has increased considerably from 2.7% in January 2022 to 6.3% in May 2022, causing considerable discomfort among the public. Madam Speaker, this recent increase in the prices of essential commodities is a result of events that have occurred outside Uganda. These are the effect of COVID-19 restrictions across the world, which disrupted supply chains 
which has consequently caused a shortage of inter intermediate raw materials used to produce some essential commodities. In the recent past, the global economy has faced high shipping costs arising from limited availability of containers and higher fuel prices, altogether leading to supply shortages globally. Three, the full opening of the economies globally following relative containment of, of, during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown has led to a rapid rise in up aggregate demand for a number of fast-moving goods, beginning with the oil, yet production levels have been constrained by COVID-19 restrictions. Four, the situation has been worsened by the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which has further disrupted the supply of oil, cereals such as wheat, maize, sunflower oil, as well as essential metals like aluminum and nickel. The two countries are major producers and exporters of these commodities. Madam Speaker, appropriate measures to curb the rising prices in the short, medium, and long term will be implemented. These measures include, one, supporting farmers to grow more fast maturing food and oil seeds to ensure sufficient domestic supply. Two, maintaining a market-based determination of prices to support a continuous supply of goods and services. This is intended to ensure that demand does not outstrip supply. Three, expediting improvement of alternative fuel import routes across Lake Victoria to avoid possible unnecessary supply disruptions. Four, using appropriate fiscal and monetary policies to mitigate the impact of price shocks. Five, construct infrastructure in the medium term and stock them adequately. And six, expediting commercial oil production and development of the oil refinery. Madam Speaker and colleagues, government cannot influence price levels whose changes are driven by external shocks that are outside this control. We will therefore not be applying measures which can lead to long-term and painful distortions in the economy. For example, persistent shortages of goods, holding, and black markets. Exchange rate developments. Madam Speaker, over the past year, the Uganda shilling initially strengthened against the US dollars, appreciating by 2.3% between April 2021 and April 2022. This appreciation was an account of higher dollar inflows from our exports, foreign direct investment, and the foreigners buying government treasury bills and bonds. However, the shilling has experienced significant depreciation pressures since March 2022 on account of concerns arising from the Ukraine-Russian conflict and related sanctions, as well as rising interest rates in advanced economies. The shilling depreciated by 1.7% month on month on average in the three months to June 2022, and by 6.7% against the US dollar between June 2021 and June 2022. The Bank of Uganda is taking appropriate measures to avoid volatile fluctuations, but not preventing the exchange rate movements. Interest rates. Madam Speaker, commercial bank lending rates for shilling denominated loans marginally declined to 18.8% in the 10-month period of April 2022, down from 19.1% in the same period in the previous year. Reduction in lending rates occurred in the transport and communication building, mortgages, construction, and real estate, and the personal and household loans sector. Now, external sector performance. Madam Speaker, total export receipts of goods and services amounted to US dollars 5.74 billion in the 12 months to April 2022, down from 6.2 trillion billion sorry, in the previous 12 months. Much China's exports reduced by US dollars 
858 million the same period. However, coffee receipts increased by US dollars 279.5 million to US dollars 811 million in the same period. Madam Speaker, private sector imports of goods have increased significantly to US dollars $6.4 billion in the year of April, to April 2022 from US dollars $5.0 billion in previous 12 months. This increase is attributed largely to investments in the oil and the gas sector. For the same reason, foreign direct investment has rebounded strongly to US dollars $1.3 billion in the year to April 2022 from US dollars 892 million in the same period a year before. Uganda's international reserves at the end of April 2022 increased to US dollars 4.54 billion, equivalent to about 4.6 months of imports. This was an increase from US dollars 3.54 billion as at April 2021. Fiscal performance. Madam Speaker, the revenue collections target in the financial 21-22 budget was shillings 22.425 trillion. Total revenue connect collection is now projected at shillings 21.486 trillion. This represents a shortfall of nine shillings, nine, nine, three, nine billion. And I will tell you a story ahead what this if what this effect has got on our, our planning despite this revenue shortfall domestic revenue collection this financial year has improved compared to last year this has been on account of improved tax administration and increased economic activity following the full opening of the economy in january 2022 madam speaker total government expenditure excluding domestic debt refinancing Extended date, external date amortization provision A is projected to amount to shillings 35.0727 trillion this ending financial year. This expenditure is equivalent to 21.6% of GDP. This is shillings 697 billion higher than the expenditure plan at the time of budgeting, mainly due to need to finance the health uh, requirements associated with the impact of COVID pandemic, and to address internal and regional security threats. Madam Speaker, the fiscal deficit this financial year, 21-22, is estimated at 7.3% of GDP, which is lower than 9% fiscal deficit registered in financial year 2021. Our target is to reduce this fiscal deficit to 3% in the medium term. COVID-19 mitigation measures. Well, uh, we we apologize for the temporary interference in our service. Uh, we'll be back shortly, and please stay tuned.
uh, vaccines development and innovative therapeutics such as COVIDx. Madam Speaker, during the pandemic, learning continued with the provision of home learning materials across the country. Following the full reopening of the schools, an additional 2,100 primary and secondary school teachers have been recruited and deployed to help the learners to catch up with the lost time. Restoring business activity. Madam Speaker, to support recovery of the economy, government has provided credit relief to borrowers as well as funding to micro, small and medium enterprises and corporate large businesses. The following progress has been registered. One, Bank of Uganda extended credit relief to enable borrowers unable to service their loans during the pandemic to restructure them. Loans totaling shillings 7.2 trillion, representing 40% of total loans, were restructured over the period. Two, domestic areas to private sector suppliers of goods and services to government, totaling to shillings 526 billion were cleared. In addition, court awards amounting to shillings 57 billion were also settled. Three, microfinance support center was funded to support micro businesses through the Mioga Fund, 100 billion shillings, and support South to Circle, shillings 27 billion. Consequently, 6,600 circles and 205,000 savings groups have been established across the country. These are operating a total of, of 4.1 million accounts. As a result, savings worth 63 billion as at the end of April this year, among the lowest earners of this country have been realized. For small businesses that do not fall under MIOGA and are at the same time do not qualify for UDB funding, the shillings 200 billion small business recovery fund has been established, established in partnership with the Bank of Uganda supervised financial institutions to offer credit at a subsidy interest rate of 10% per annum. Five, to support the recovery of medium and large scale businesses, Uganda Development Bank was capitalized to the tune of 636 billion and which was fully disbursed by May 2022 at an interest rate of 3% per annum. In addition, UDB plans to disburse a further 351 billion Uganda shillings by December this year. For, for private sector enterprises engaged in strategic industrial development of the country, such as agro, agro processing, manufacturing, and the mineral beneficiation, the Uganda Development Corporation, UDC, received 160 uh, 160.7 billion this financial year to make equity joint ventures investment with those businesses. Seven, government has also disbursed the shillings 20 billion to teachers circle to support them to recover from the pandemic. Eight, in the financial year 21-22, the agricultural credit facility disbursed a total of shillings 67.4 billion to 1,057 uh, borrowers as at June 2022. Cumulatively, the fund has financed a total of 3,120 farmers across the country to a tune of shillings, 737.3 billion shillings. Following amendment of the National Social Security Fund Act, to allow mid-term access for qualifying members, a total of shillings 420 billion has so far been paid out to about 21,500 beneficiaries. And 10, for women in the Tapurumas, I have received a US dollar 217 million grant from the World Bank to provide funding in the coming financial year to middle-level businesses managed by women to support their growth and create jobs.
Madam Speaker, as a result of the above measures, we have begun to see positive trends in business activity. For example, during the 10 months from July 2021 to April 2022, there was a 38% increase in taxpayers with 686,000 new taxpayers being added to the taxpayer register. In addition, investor sentiments about doing business in Uganda have remained positive in the rest, in recent months, as illustrated by the following indicators between July 2021 and May 2022. One, the business tendency index, which has increased by 20.8%. The business tendency index measures the level of optimism that executives have about current and expected output look for production, order levels, employment, prices, and access to credit. Two, the purchasing managers index, which has increased by 48.8%. This is an indicator of business activity, both in the manufacturing and service, uh, and, 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 and service sectors. Three, the composite index of economic activity, which has increased by 4.3%. This CIA represents the monthly underlying forces in the national economy. Now we turn to the medium term economic outlook. Madam Speaker and the colleagues, Future prospects for our economy are very positive, with minimum term growth projected at 6.5% per annum. We could repeat the other thing. <laughs> May I repeat it? <laughs> ah. <laughs> the positive economic outlook is dependent on the following. One, the full reopening of the economy. Two, the increase in global demand for some commodities we produce and export, such as coffee, livestock, tea, and other food products. Three, commercialization of oil and gas following the announcement of the final investment decision in February this year. Four, active import substitution for goods that Uganda can produce and export competitively, such as pharmaceuticals. Five, support private sector industries, particularly in the agro industry, light manufacturing, and the value addition to our minerals. Six, improved access to affordable for micro, small, and the medium enterprise to enable their businesses revive and create jobs. Seven, fast tracking the implementation of the parish development model, which targets increased production of strategic commodities for domestic consumption as well as for export. Eight, digitization of the economy to raise efficiency gains in the business and the government. Now I turn to financial year 2022-23 budget strategy. Madam Speaker and the colleagues, the budget strategy for the financial year 2022-23 and over the medium term seeks to restore economic activity to the pre-pandemic levels and subsequently accelerate the pace of social economic transformation. The three broad objectives of the strategies are, one, sustaining peace, security, and stability, as well as macroeconomic stability, as key foundations for recovery, growth, and social economic transformation. Three, mitigation of the COVID-19 impact on business activity, livelihoods, and overall economy. Three, speeding up social economic transformation by repurposing the budget towards wealth and job creation, as well as other impactful investments. Imperatives for implementing the financial year 22-23 budget. Madam Speaker and colleagues, in order to achieve these three key objectives, the following imperatives must be adhered to. One, 
national budget reform to make it more redistributive and responsive to national priorities. Two, enhance the fiscal discipline to limit supplemental expenditure to only unforeseen and unavoidable spending within the 3% provided for under the law. Three, enhance domestic revenue core mobilization to increase the revenue to DGP ratio to a target of 18% over the medium term. Four, limit the borrowing to restore the date to GDP ratio to within 50% over the medium term as provided for in the Charter for Fiscal Responsibility. Five, continued alignment of the budget to the National Development Plan to ensure that our development priorities are adequately funded. Six, automate government processes and systems to enhance efficiency, save money, fight fraud, and other forms of corruption. Seven, rationalization and restructuring of government to eliminate duplication, overlaps, mandate wars, and resource wasting. Now I turn to financial year, budget priorities. Madam Speaker, the key priorities for the financial year 22-23 budget are the following. One, enhancement of security, the rule of law, and fighting corruption. Two, sustaining economic recovery. Three, implementation of the parish development model to create wealth and jobs. Four, promotion of agro-industrialization, standards, and market entry. Five, commercialization of oil and gas. Six, enhancement of transport, energy, and ICT infrastructure. Seven, enhancing human capital development, science, innovation, and knowledge transfer. Eight, enhancing public sector effectiveness and efficiency. Enhancing security, the rule of law, and anti-corruption. Madam Speaker, peace, security, and stability, as well as rule of law, are the bedrock of social economic transformation. We all know that. And thus must remain the key government priority. Peace, security, and stability. Madam Speaker, the recent surge in cattle theft and cross-border conflicts in the Karamoja sub-region have been and will continue to be the addressed. In a, the, I'm sure the president will make, make a comment on this. In a recent supplementary budget, government provided shillings 112.5 billion to facilitate the UPDF to carry out operations and the means of works and transport to construct security roads in the Karamoja sub-region. The UPDF will also continue with the pacification of the Eastern Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo in line with the agreement with the government of the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo. Madam Speaker, with respect to capacity and the well-being of our security forces, government, we, in the medium term, embark on enhancement of pay for our gallant men and women in uniform. I'm talking, I always talk. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the construction of the military referral hospital in Mbuya is on schedule and within budget. Madam Speaker, in order to enhance surveillance and improve crime detection, the first phase of CCTV camera project was successfully implemented with installation of over 3,000 cameras countrywide. The second phase is now 95% complete and it targets all cities and the major highways. Madam Speaker, 3.987 trillion shillings has been provided for improvement of security and, and the security infrastructure. Rule of law, Madam Speaker, in order to enhance the rule of law, the priority will be to improve the dispensation of justice for all the judiciary will be supported to allow for speedy dispensation of justice and address the backlog of cases. In terms of systems that enhance the judicial process, the electronic court case management information system to improve case management is now functional 
in seven court circuits within the greater Kampala metropolitan area. Additionally, the video conferencing system is operational in several courts across the country to roll out the electronic court case management information system and the video conferencing system in addition to 10 court to 10 in addition to 10 courts will also commence next financial year. Madam Speaker, our administration of justice will be strengthened with the recruitment of more judicial officers, the establishment, the establishment of two regional courts of appeal in Guru and Mbarara, and two high court circuits in Luero and Soroti. In addition, three chief magistrate courts in Arbeton, Yande, Budaka, and four grade one magistrate courts in Karenga, Patongo, Abim, Kiankwan's districts will also be established. Madam Speaker, in order to further improve the delivery of justice, the construction of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal Building will be completed soon. In addition, the Chief Magistrate buildings in Hoima, Ruero, Masindi districts, among others, were rehabilitated during the ending financial year. Madam Speaker, over 78% of the population can now access a frontline service point within a five areas. This with the coverage of justice frontline service points has increased from 61.5% in 2017 to 74% in 2021. Anti-corruption. Madam Speaker, we continue to make progress in the fight against corruption. There was increased declar uh, declaration of income, assets, and liabilities by leaders from 25,000 to 400,000 in 2021, with increase in the scope of public servants who are required to declare income, assets, and liabilities. This financial year, three billion has been recovered from corrupt leaders and public servants and deposited with the consolidated fund. We need more. Madam Speaker, to enhance the rule of law and to step up the fight against corruption, I have provided shilling 381.6 billion to the judiciary, shilling 95.0 billion for the director of public prosecution, shilling 876.4 billion for the Uganda police, and shilling 308.7 billion for the Uganda prison service. I have also allocated 79.4 billion for the inspectorate of government. Implementation of the parish development model. Madam Speaker and colleagues, in order to integrate the 5.5 the million households currently working in the subsistence economy into the machine fully. Madam Speaker, in the financial ending June 2022, 234 billion was provided for implementation of the PDM. My efforts have been focused on preparatory activities to prepare for full implementation of the model. These include recruitment of parish chiefs by all districts, data collection, verification of beneficiaries, establishment of circles, setting up of the PDM management unit in the Ministry of Local Government, and sensitization and mobilization, among others. Madam Speaker, next financial year, I provided a total of 1 trillion, uh, 0.059 Uganda shillings for full implementation of the model. Each of the 10,594 parishes in the country will receive 100 million as a revolving, a revolving fund for purchase of agricultural inputs by, house, by households still in system. Madam Speaker, the parish development model will be complemented by other government programs such as the MIOGA Fund, the Microfinance Support Center Credit to other circles, village savings groups, the Small Business Recovery Fund, and other wealth creation initiatives. Now I turn to agricultural production. Madam Speaker, Agricultural production will be enhanced using the first pillar of the parish development model that addresses the production, agro-processing, and marketing through enhanced access and entry 
to national, regional, and global markets. This value chain approach allows development of sustainable linkages. The key interventions will include, one, development of key commodities value chains that have a high impact on transforming the 39% of households in subsistence into the money economy. These include coffee, beef, dairy cattle, poultry, fish, piggery, fruits, food crops for intensive farming, the rest of enterprise including cassava, bananas, rice, Irish potatoes, millet, cotton, tea, cashew nuts, among others. We are also providing community and individual on farm water for production to minimize reliance on rain-fed uh, agriculture and ensuring sustained agricultural production. Enhancement of research, breeding, and appropriate technology development through the National Animal Genetic Resource Center and the Data Bank, and the National Agricultural Research Organization. Investment in and effective regulation of production, multiplication, and certification of quality agricultural inputs, including seeds, seedlings, stocking materials, and fertilizers. Enhancement of enterprise selection through enhanced farm education and a general agricultural extension, as well as pest and disease control at parish level. Promotion of appropriate land use, mechanization, cooperatives, and eventual partnerships with large-scale farmers with engines, next ETC. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 564.3 9 billion to increase production and productivity through the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industries, and Fisheries. Now, climate change and environmental degradation. Madam Speaker and the colleagues, climate change is a, significant, is a significant risk for agriculture production and food security. In order to mitigate environmental degradation, we have set a target to increase the national forest cover from the current 20.4% to 15%. Central forest reserves will be protected from encroachment or encroachers. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 268 billion in the next financial year 2022-23 for actions to mitigate and adapt to climate change. Now I turn promoting agro-industrialization standards and market entry. Madam Speaker, promoting agro-industrialization, enforcing product standards and enabling market access and entry are key aspects for creating wealth and jobs. within the 18 zones of this country. Two, enhancing the use of warehouse receipt system to improve commodity storage, reduce post harvest losses, improve value chain management, and increase income to farmers. Three, providing funds for private sector investment in key commodity agro-processing value chains through soft and patient date from UDD and equity from UDC. Four, strengthening of standards for quality assurance to, prove, to improve access to markets. Five, establishing a system for issuance and management of internationally recognized product barcodes, branding, packaging, and labeling of Uganda and entry to regional and international markets. Seven, Establishing fully service industrial, industrial parks. Eight, promoting investment in strategic industries such as, manufacturer, uh, for, such as 
manufacture of pharmaceuticals, industrial sugar, starch, herbal extracts, and cotton-based medical standards. Nine, finalize the enactment of pending legal instruments, for example, the competition bill and the consumer protection bill, and counterfeits and quality product laws. Ten, developing a master plan for the Zombo Tea Factory and establishing enabling infrastructure, including water and electricity. Eleven, expanding the Sorot Fruit Factory by installing additional processing equipment, supporting There is also a factory in a place called Kakoge, which is handling sorot fruit, which is handling mangoes, pineapples, and I visited it last Friday. That also would definitely help. Twelve, supporting a settlement of 200 aggregation and a collective market societies with cleaning, drying, grading, and processing equipment. I have allocated 1.449 trillion to promote agro-industrialization standards and market entry. Supporting economic recovery and commercial realization of oil and gas. Madam Speaker, as I reported earlier, we have taken major steps to revive business activities, which we shall which we shall continue to do in the medium and in the following sectors. Tourism. Madam Speaker, tourism was severely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The good news is that the sector is recovering very fast. Government shall support the sector to return to its pre-pandemic levels and beyond by, by prioritizing the following interventions. One, facilitation of Uganda Tourism Board to rebrand and promote Uganda under the new Explorer Uganda brand. Two, sustain scaling investment in tourism infrastructure like roads, electricity, internet, and security. Three, easing access to bank. Four, intensifying promotion of domestic tourism. Madam, I provide tourism activities with shillings 194.7 billion to complement private sector investment and support its recovery. Commercialization of oil and gas. Madam Speaker and colleagues, the construction of the East African crude oil pipeline is expected to commence the coming financial The capacity of the Uganda National Oil Company to invest in oil and gas development has also been enhanced. While there have been negative campaigns against the development of the crude oil pipeline, the government will develop Uganda's oil and gas resources in a responsible and sustainable manner for the benefit of all Ugandans. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 904.1 billion towards the development and the commercialization of our minerals, oil, and the gas. Enhancing human capital development. Madam Speaker, having successfully contained the COVID-19 pandemic over the last two years, our efforts are going to be focused on improving the quality of life of the people of Uganda by prioritizing the following. Health. Madam Speaker, the emphasis now is on mass vaccination of all eligible persons community disease surveillance by strengthening village health teams with the training and equipping them with a smartphone and a bicycle. Additional health assistance and surveillance officers will be recruited to support the VHTs. Madam Speaker, the of health infrastructure nationwide will continue. 
The rehabilitation and expansion of the following general hospitals will be undertaken. Itojo, Kabo, Kambuga, Masindi, Kanungu, Kapachorwa, Bugiri, and Amdad. In addition, 43 health centers, two will be upgraded to health center threes, and 17 new health center threes will be built in sub counties without health facilities of such health facilities. 75 staff houses will also be built in the Karamoja region. Madam Speaker, next financial year, the Minister of Health will start implementing the Uganda. COVID-19 emergency response and the preparedness project supported by a grant from the World Bank amounting to shilling to US dollars 100.3 million, which is equivalent to 667.1 million billion Uganda shillings. This grant will finance the rapid detection, prevention, and quick responses to threats posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. It will also finance the strengthening of national systems for public health preparedness. Madam Speaker and colleagues, the construction and equipping of a modern health facility will commence in the coming financial year to be located in Naguru. This US dollar 70 million facility will be funded by the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, the Saudi Fund for Development, SDF, and the OPEC Fund for international development, OPEC fund. Madam Speaker, I have allocated a total of 3.722 trillion for healthcare delivery in financial year 22-23. Now I go to water. Madam Speaker, national safe water coverage now stands at 69.8% with the coverage in rural areas at 68% and 71.6% in the urban areas. Our target is to increase safe water coverage to 81% over the mid-term. Madam Speaker, during financial year 2022, the following major water projects were implemented. One, five medium scale irrigation schemes in Ngenge, that is in Kwen district, Ruengaju in the Kawarole district, Tochi, in Oyam district, Mubuku 2 in Kasese district, and Doho 2 in Butaleja district. 106 small scale irrigation schemes in the districts of Giri, Bukedia, Tororo, Iganga, Mbali, Kapuchorwa, Pakwach, and many others. Three, substantial completion of Katosi water treatment plant which will produce 160 million liters of water per day. Four, upgrading of Kapeka water supply system to five million liters per day, double the current capacity and double the current capacity. Five, rehabilitation and expansion of the Sembabule water supply project. This plant is now able to produce 30 million liters per day. Madam Speaker, the following water projects which are ongoing will continue to be implemented. One, construction of 80 kilometer water supply infrastructure from, Nile, from River Nile to serve 484,000 people in Acholi and Lango subregion. Two, constructing water infrastructure from River Kagera to serve an additional 75,000 people in Isingiro, Mbarara, and Masaka subregions. The Wakiso Waste Water and Sanitation Project, that's number three. Number four, the rehabilitation and expansion of Mbali Water Supply Scheme. Number five, construction of water, waste water treatment plant targeting Kirudu Hospital. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 1.027 trillion towards the water and environmental uh, sub program. Now I turn to education. Madam Speaker, education is a key opportunity equalizer for human beings. During the COVID 19 induced uh, lockdown period, many teachers abandoned the profession 
and the classrooms got dilapidated in several institutions. But now efforts have started to revamp the education sector. For IRETA, we put on improving the quality of education to enhance learning outcomes. The following will be undertaken. One, staffing gaps will be filled in the primary and secondary schools. Two, training of teachers and instructors on the new abridged curriculum will continue and the lower secondary curriculum will be rolled out. Three, continuous assessment will be fully rolled out. Four, inspect across all learning institutions will be strengthened using teacher education and learning assessment system. Five, operationalization of the Moroto Constituent College of Agriculture, Mountains of the Moon, Busoga University will take effect. Consultation to operationalize Bunyoro University will commence next financial year 23-24. Five, six, construction and equipping of two unit laboratories in 21 secondary schools currently without any in line with the science, technology, engineering, and math, math, math policy. And seven, the construction, upgrading, and equipping of vocational education centers of excellence in Usheni, Lira, Ergon Technical Constitution will be completed. Madam Speaker, I have requested, we are developing a three prospective COVID-19 vaccines which are undergoing in, in animal trials. Human trials will commence next financial year. In addition, clinic trials for COVID-19 treatment for viral diseases are also ongoing. Next financial year, research into medicine development will ex be expanded to cancer, diabetes, sickle cell anemia, and malaria. Madam Speaker, in September this year, Uganda will launch into the lower Earth orbit its first ever satellite from the International Space Station in collaboration with the USA National Aeronautic and Space Administration, NASA. A ground station at Impoma, Mkono, will receive data from the satellite. The data from this satellite will be used for meteorological, environmental monitoring, urban planning, mineral exploration, and disaster management, among others. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 274.4 billion towards advancing innovation and technological development in this country. Enhancing transport and the power infrastructure. Madam Speaker, the following achievements have been recorded in transport infrastructure development. One, construction and upgrading of 20 national roads covering a total distance of 1,437 kilometers has been done. Two, the rehabilitation has commenced on 160 kilometers of Tororoguru meter gauge railway and 265 kilometers of Tororo Namanve railway line section. The procurement of, loco of locomotives is ongoing. Contin three, continuation with the compensation and acquisition of right of way for the Kampala Malaba standard gauge railway is, 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 will continue. Five, four, sorry. The rehabilitation of the Entebbe International Airport stands at 75% completion and the Kabul International Airport is at 72%. Five, Maintenance of 5,200 kilometers of paved and 15,350 kilometers of unpaved national and city roads and 21,631 kilometers of unpaved local government and community roads has been undertaken. Madam Speaker, next financial, uh, the following interventions in transport infrastructure will be implemented. One, construction of, 40, of 400 kilometers equivalent of roads to bitumen standards, rehabilitation, construction of 200 kilometers equivalent, and construction of 30 bridges on the national roads network. Two, rehabilitation of 922 kilometers of district roads and 126 kilometers of local government roads. Three, we shall continue with the development of the Bukasa inland port. Four, we shall commence Uganda Airlines flights to London and China. Madam Speaker, I have allocated shillings 4.3 trillion next financial year for the transport infrastructure development and maintenance. 
power infrastructure. Madam Speaker, national electricity access today stands at 57% shamefully, of which 19% is on the main national grid and 38% is off grid, including solar power. Uganda's total electricity generation capacity has increased from 1,269 megawatts in financial 2019-20 to 1,347 megawatts in financial year 21-22 on account of the completion of 42 megawatt actual one, the 21 megawatt Nyamagasani, and the 15.5 megawatt sugar corporation of Uganda plants. The transmission network increased from 3,100 kilometers in financial year 2021 to 3,431 kilometers at the end of the third quarter financial year 21-22 as a result of commissioning of the Karuma Kawanda 400 kV and the Karuma Rio 132 kV transmission lines. The Ruzira substation was uh, completed and will be commissioned uh, after completion of the 15 kilometer 132 kV transmission line. Madam Speaker, in the next financial year, the following intervention in the power infrastructure will continue to be implemented. One, commence the unit by unit commissioning of the 600 megawatt Karuma hydro plant, hydro plant in September 2022, with the plant being fully available in June 2023. Two, complete the Opuyo Moroto, Lira Guru Nebi Arua, Lira Guru Agago, and the Mutundwe and Tebe 132 KVA transmission lines. Three, commence feasibility and design studies for the 400 KV Uganda South Sudan transmission line between Oruyo, Nimule, Juba. The, two, four, uh, the 400 kV Uganda Democratic Republic of Congo interconnection and the 400 kV Uganda Tanzania transmission line. Madam Speaker, I have provided 1.573 trillion to ensure the above are undertaken. Information communication technology infrastructure. Madam Speaker, the geographical coverage of broadband services stands at 66%, allowing digital access for 74% of the population. Next financial year, the government will support the fourth industrial revolution technologies. These include artificial intelligence, internet of things, and the use of rob robotics. We shall also extend broadband ICT infrastructure to enable connectivity to facilitate public service delivery. Madam Speaker, I have allocated 124.2 billion towards digitization. Enhancing public sector effectiveness and efficiency. Madam Speaker, public sector effectiveness and efficiency will be improved through the following measures. One. Continued rationalization of government and public expenditure. Two, automation of government businesses and service delivery. This includes the e-procurement, the parish development model information system, government asset management, education, information management, electronic document management, integrated health management information system, e-payment gateway, and the e-post digital platform. We shall also, three, we shall also embark on decongesting the censorship and immigration office in Kampala by establishing centers in the Kampala capital city divisions, commencing with the Nakawa division. Four, the salaries of medical workers, scientists, and the science teachers have been enhanced. Very big. In addition to, in addition, I think I'll repeat this one. The salaries of medical workers, scientists, and science teachers have been enhanced. <laughs> to a figure which is about 900.
In addition to, sensing, to, to incentivizing scientists, this will also help to improve functionality of education and health facilities by addressing absenteeism and low moral personnel. Let me repeat this. In addition to incentivizing scientists, this will also help to improve functionality of education and health facilities by addressing absenteeism and low morale of personnel. Madam Speaker, to enhance the decentralization policy, a total of shillings 5.1 trillion has been provided as this direct financing to local governments. Fiscal framework and the financing strategy for financial year 22-23. Madam Speaker, the financial year 22-23 budget priorities I have just elaborated will be financed from the following sources. One, enhanced domestic revenue mobilization. Two, external financing in the form of loans and grants from our development partners and private creditors. Three, public-private partnerships that mobilize the private sector financing for public projects. The resource envelope for financial 22-23, Madam Speaker and colleagues, the resource envelope for financial year 22-23 amounts to shillings 48, 130.7 billion or 48.3.13 trillion and is comprised of both domestic and external resources as detailed below. Domestic revenue amounts to three to 30 thousands 797.3 billion of which 23,754.9 billion will be tax revenue and 1,795.9 billion will be non tax revenue. Domestic borrowing amounts to 5.5,000 Point seven five thousand seven point nine billion budget support accounts for shillings two thousand six hundred and nine point two billion external financing for projects amounting to shillings six thousand seven hundred sixteen billion of which shillings four thousand six hundred twenty five point seven billion is from loans and shillings two thousand nine hundred ninety 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 point five billion is from grants appropriation in aid collected by local governments amounts to shillings two hundred thirty eight point five billion and domestic daily financing will amount to shillings eight thousand eight hundred eight thousand and eight uh, billion madam speaker Total expenditure will be shillings 48, excluding domestic data financing and appropriation aid. It amounts to 39,884.2 billion, of which wages and salaries is 6,366.9 billion. Interest payments is shillings 4,691.9 billion. Nine wage current expenditure is shillings 14,254.4 billion. And development expenditure is shillings 14,565.9 billion. Tax measures for the financial year. 2022-23. Madam Speaker, no new taxes will be introduced in financial year 22-23. I heard people disputing this, and I'm repeating it. I think this is the fifth time. Let me read it again. No new taxes will be introduced in the financial year 22-23. We will achieve revenue targets by improving 
the efficiency in tax collection and enhancing compliance to the tax laws. The capacity of the Ugandan Revenue Authority will be enhanced by recruiting and training staff, deploying appropriate equipment and ICT to enforce tax laws. Madam Speaker, I wish to report that Parliament has made amendments to the various tax laws intended to simplify the laws, clarify previously ambiguous provisions, and close put loopholes that may lead to revenue leakage, but not increasing taxes. Madam Speaker, the amendments that have been made are the Income Tax Act, Value Added Tax, the Stamp Duty Act, and the Tax Procedures Act. I will now highlight the major amendments. Income Tax. Madam Speaker, the Corporate Income Tax Exemption for Jagali Hydropower Project has been extended for one year up to 30th June 2023 in order not to increase electricity tariffs for power that the project will generate. Madam Speaker, the Income Tax Act has been amended to streamline the rental income tax regime for individuals and non-individuals as follows. One, introduce a zero rental income tax for individuals that earn annual rent income not exceeding 2,820 2, shillings and the rate of 20% of rental income exceeding that amount. Two, for rental business, introduce a 30% rental income tax rate on rental income with expenses capped to 50% for each year of income. In addition, any excess expenses shall not be carried forward to a subsequent year of income. Value added tax, Madam Speaker, under the value added, the value added tax act, the following amendments have been made. Exempted the supply of oxygen cylinders, or oxygen for medical use to reduce the cost of the supply of oxygen for medical use. Two, exempted the supply of ass assistive devices for persons with disabilities to reduce the cost of equipment used by persons with disabilities. Three, exempted the supply of airport user services charged by the, the Civil Aviation Authority to reduce the cost of trans transiting through Entebbe Airport. Four, to allow for cash basis accounting for suppliers who supply goods and services to the government to facilitate them to hedge against the risk of interest and penalties <coughs> arising from delayed payments by government. Five, repeat the exemption on VAT on imported services used in the provision of an exempt uh, supply to encourage businesses to use local suppliers of services such as information and communication technological services. Tax procedures code. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, the amendment under Tax Procedure Code Act include the following. Introduced penalties for failure to provide information for purposes of automatic, automatic exchange of information to improve compliance. Two. Introduce penalties for failure to adhere to the electronic fiscal deceiving and invoicing solution and digital tax stamps. This is intended to combat tax evasion and smuggling and other vices. Stamp duty. Madam Speaker, under the stamp duty, the following amendments have been made. Provide for need stamp duty on the following instruments. A. Arguments relating to the deposit of title deeds or personal property or goods to another as a pledge or as a security for a sum of money borrowed. B, agriculture insurance policy to encourage the uptake of agriculture insurance services. C, security bond or mortgage deed executed by way of a security for the due execution of an office or to account for money or other property received by virtue of a security bond or mortgage deed executed by surety for secure to secure a loan or a credit facility. Clarification of the rate of shillings 15,000 applicable on a transmission of property from the administrator to an estate of the beneficiary. 
exercise duty. Madam Speaker, under the exercise duty act, the government has undertaken the following amendments. One, clarification of benefit compliance. Two, reduce exercise duty applicable on opaque beer and fermented beverages made from locally sourced raw materials to 20% or 150 shillings per liter, whichever is higher. This is intended to promote value addition and the use of locally sourced raw materials. The mid-term financing strategy, Madam Speaker, the financing of the budget will be generated from implementation of the following revenue and public date measures. Domestic revenue mobilization. Madam Speaker, the objective of government services arising from the full reopening of the economy. Public investment financing strategy. Madam Speaker, uh, the government will implement the public investment financing strategy starting next financial year to achieve the following objectives. One, improve alignment of sustainable financing options to government programs and projects. Two, minimize the cost and risk exposure of financing modalities. Three, ensure prudent loans acquisition to avoid data accumulation in a short period and timely disbursement of loan funds. Four, long-term fiscal sustainability. Incre five, increase financing from traditional and other innovative sources to meet the development financial requirements. And six, provide the framework for partnership with the private sector in the implementation and the financing of public investment programs. Public data management, Madam Speaker. As at the end of December 2021, Uganda's total public data stock stood at shillings 73.5 trillion, equivalent to US dollars 20.7 billion, of which external date amounted to shillings 45.7 trillion, equivalent to US dollars 20.5 billion. And the domestic date amounted to shillings 27.77 trillion, equivalent to US dollars 7.84 billion. This represents a nominal date to GDP ratio of 49.7%. The rise in debt stock was mainly on account of need to support the economy and preserve the welfare of households as a result of COVID-19 and other external and domestic shocks. Date was also used to finance the shortfalls in domestic revenue. Madam Speaker, the government is implementing the following measure to ensure long-term public date sustainability. One, reduce the level of domestic borrowing over the medium term to an average of 2.2% of GDP per year. This ratio will, redu will be reduced further to a policy target of 1.0% one, of, 1 of GDP over the long term. Three, two, sorry, two, implement the public investment financing strategy. This strategy will ensure alignment of suitable financing modalities with the nature of government programs and projects. Three, implement the financial year 22-23 borrowing strategy, which is consistent with our medium term date management strategy to avoid the risks associated with unsustainable date. Four, borrow largely on favorable terms and for projects that enhance productivity of the economy. Five, sequencing new projects in a manner that makes the government service its date obligation without the risk of default. This means the government will only mobilize date financing for ready projects and will cancel projects with the poor performance. I will repeat this. This means the government will only mobilize date financing for ready projects and will cancel projects with poor performance. 
For six, increase domestic revenue by implementing the domestic revenue mobilization strategy. Now I'm conclusion. Conclusion, Madam Speaker and the colleagues, the budget for the next financial year presents a, a, set, a set of strategic choices and the government's commitment to stimulate economic recovery, enhance productivity and competitiveness of enterprises, and most importantly, wealth creation and the jobs for the ordinary Ugandans. Substantial resources have been earmarked for the implementation of the parish development model. This model will be a vehicle of social economic transformation at the parish level and the monetization of Ugandan's economy. Successful implementation of the parish development model ushers in a mass social economic transformation movement in our society with better sustained, sustained outcomes. I therefore urge all leaders and Ugandans to ensure that these resources are effectively used to bring about the desired change. I repeat this. I therefore urge all the leaders at whatever level and whatever sector and Ugandans to ensure that these resources are effectively used to bring about the desired change. It will really be a very big shame to hear that this money we are sending down for the parish development model, some money has gone cham, 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 cham. Very shameful. Please, this is our country. We should stand firm. There's nobody who is going to come to help you when we cannot help ourselves. When we get resources, let those resources go for the purpose for which they have been given. To the Ugandan scientists and health workers, government has fulfilled its commitment to enhancing your pay. You have heard, Uganda expects better service in return. Tit for tat. Tit for tat. You give me, I give you. I have enhanced the sciences salaries by a figure which I mentioned. I expect to get a better return. To the micro, finance, to the micro small and medium enterprises, I implore you to take advantage of the economic recovery programs and the opportunities that come with the petroleum and other public infrastructure investment to re, to re, re, re strategize, recover your business, sorry, let me repeat. Recovery programs and the opportunities that come with petroleum and other public infrastructure investments to re strategize, recover your businesses, expand and formalize. This way, you will be able to benefit more from the now bigger East African community market and create decent and better paying jobs for our children. For our who? <laughs> for the women entrepreneurs, the grant from the World Bank will support the growth of your enterprises, create better paying jobs and enable you to exploit the opportunities in the economy to enhance your incomes. How about Chiara? For me to be happy and to, be, to, be, to believe that you have responded, you must be productive. You must be productive, more wealth, and more bigger business, both internally and externally, and you give me taxes so that I don't have to go to borrow and be abused as an old man that what have you come here, go back to Uganda. This has happened to me in one case. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I dedicate this budget to delivering the Ugandan household still in the substance to the money economy. I thank you all of you for listening to me and may good Lord keep you in good 
health so that we see this Uganda becoming a much better place for everybody to live in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister of Finance. Item number six, remarks by His Excellency the President. Excellency, Vice President, the Right Honourable Speaker, His Lordship the Chief Justice, all the other leaders, and honourable members of Parliament, you have heard the speech by the Minister. It is clear enough. I just want to introduce two words. One is Waka. And those who speak our, our children will not know that Waka. Wake, wake, wake means boasting. You boast. The way I'm going to call it a question. When you are on a beer party among the Banyankore, you can say, I have got more cows than all of you. You boast. And with the Vanyankore, they just laugh. They don't take offense. Because they also want to be rich like you. But I'm told that among the Acholis, they may spear you. <laughs> that if you are okay, they may spear you. But since I'm a bit far from Gurek and Wake here, And the other one is Poco Marom. Poco Marom. That is Pokugabala Bulungi. To distribute food well or fairly. In Nigeria, we call it Poco Marom. In 2000, and, by 2005 and six, the country was getting into a problem. Our people in finance, without consultation, had agreed with the, the, the donors that all the government revenue should go for expenditure of running the just running the, the country. Salaries and so on. and that what they call recurrent ex expenditure. And that the development budget will only be supported by the donors. 2005, we had a big shortage of electricity. That's when load shedding started. 
after the election in 2006, I called a conference of the cabinet, but also the MLM caucus, and I said, you people, I cannot accept this. We must budget for both the recurrent and the development budget. And we agreed. That's when we put more money on the roads and more money on electricity. Apart from whatever we are putting on, on, on education and health and, and water. Now I was checking the results of that decision. which was Poco Marom. If you go on the roads, I have the whole list here. After all, there was government funding there, together with some other funds. Burima Kaboya, government funding there with others. Nyakaita Kazo, government funding with others. Bumbovi Rohaha, government funding. Chigumba Burima, government funding. Rukunjiri Chihi, government funding with others. Masaka Mukakata, government funding with others. Hoi Mukiaba Wanseko, government spending with some other, people, other groups. Buhimbanabwe Yobola Majibu and so on, government spending with others. Masind Park, Parab Risa, government funding with others. Hoha Nyairongo, Charusesha, Butore, Kaba Harechi, Zalamfumbi, government funding with others. Atiak, Laropi, government funding with others. Kampala Northern Bypass, Government funding with others. Kampala. Money. Matugasimuto. Government funding alone. Busegamitiana. Government funding, government of Uganda funding alone. Busega Mitiana too, government funding, government of Uganda alone. Fort Port of Unduwijo, government of Uganda alone. Ishaka Kagamba, government of Uganda alone. Government of Uganda alone. Waha, Government of Uganda alone. Moroto, Axim, Government of Uganda alone. Sorot Katapi, Government of Uganda alone. Rushere, Rushere, that's near my home, government of Uganda alone. Kasheni Mitoma, Kitabi, government of Uganda alone. Chitara Gerenge, government of Uganda alone. Barra Municipality Roads, government of Uganda alone. Mpigi Town Roads, government of Uganda alone. 
Chira, Matuga, Chira, Matuga, government of Uganda alone. This, this one is ongoing. Moroto Roktenyara, government of Uganda alone. Entebbe Hospital, Entebbe Pediatric Hospital, Government of Uganda alone. Chira Matuga, Government of Uganda alone. Maja Nankundu Busawala, Government of Uganda alone. And so on. The list is so long. I will send this list to the honorable MPs so that you can see. This was now new construction, constructing new roads or constructing old ones. But there is rehabilitation. Mitiana Mbede, government of Uganda alone. Katungur Kasese, government of Uganda alone. Sorot Dokoro, Lira Kamdi, World Bank and government of Uganda. Torunbara Soroti, World Bank, government of Uganda. Masaka Town, Government of Uganda alone. Rehabilitation of Budo Roads, Government of Uganda alone. Namu Sisironko Muyembe, Government of Uganda alone. And so on. I will send you this document. Rehabilitation of Nakalama, Tirini Mbare, Government of Uganda alone. Fort Potro Hima, Government of Uganda alone. Mukono Karagi Kayunga of Koloto Njeru, Government of Uganda alone. Nansan of Sunju, Government of Uganda alone. Ishaka Katungu, Government of Uganda alone. Hima Katungu, Government of Uganda alone. Chengejo Fort Poto, Government of Uganda alone. Sungira Hill, something, Government of Uganda alone. Bundubuja Nyauka, Government of Uganda alone. Mvara, EDFA, this is Narua, Government of Uganda alone. Iga Angakariro, Government of Uganda alone. Okwachi Nebi, Government of Uganda alone. Kamdin Guru, Government of Uganda alone. Chiriandongo Karuma Kamdin, Government of Uganda alone. Jinja Kamuri, Government of Uganda alone. Mbare Soroti, Government of Uganda alone. Tororombare, Government of Uganda alone. Kawempe Kafu, Chiriandongo, Government of Uganda alone, and so on. This is now the roads. Coming out of that decision of 2006, where we said we must have our own money to deal with the development budget. On the side of electricity, the same. There are many other projects, geothermal resources, energy investment fund. There are so many other programs here of the petroleum. So many projects, uh, nuclear energy, and so on. But I'm, I just want the lines which people can easily uh, see. abbreviation, industrial parks, government of Uganda with some other people, Opuyo, Moroto, government of Uganda with some other people, Kampala and Tebe, government of Uganda with some other people, Karuma, 
because this karma and uh, and the Simba we contributed, it was the government of Uganda and, South, and, and China. Muzizi, government of Uganda with some other people. Nyagat, government of Uganda with some other people. So many of them. Oh, I will send you the whole list. So, the point I'm making here is that the poor call, Marong, the, the Okugaburo Wungi, this money has made so much impact. And on the, on the, on the area of science and technology, we have built the Chira Motors. We are working on uh, putting a, a satellite in space with our own money. The pathogen economy, the vaccines, which I hear you attacking Musenor about. I'll come back and defend Musenor and the people will. My, my voice, I can talk, you can talk, but I can also talk. The human vaccines, the antique vaccine, the foot and mouth and, and swine fever vaccine, COVID -X. digital electronics and automation, all of these are funded by the government of Uganda. Either wholly or partially. So this shows you, that's why I, I thought I should work here. Is it okay? Yeah, I, should, I, I thought I should come here and, and really boast. So you see, if I tell you, And because of these measures, you had in the speech of uh, the minister saying that the GDP, GDP per capita is now 1,046. This is what I have told you here the other day. But it did not come out clearly say that we have now entered the entrance of the middle income. I don't know what he feared. I don't know what he feared that we may enter in the, in the entrance and then go back. I don't know what he feared. Go back out of, uh, out of the of the entrance, but I don't see how we shall go back from the entrance because the entry point is is one thousand. Some some say thirty six. Some say th some say thirty nine. These people can tell you the exact figure. So these steps. Are the minister said in speech, a result of deliberate steps, some of the deliberate steps we take, but others we don't take them and waste a lot of time. If I had not insisted in 2006 to put this man on the roads, I don't know where Uganda would be and, and electricity. I remember, for instance, the line from Konaklak to Patongo to Karongo and maybe Abim. The Swedish had promised us to do it. But last minute they said, no, we can't do it because there is war, there is what? That's when we said, no, we shall use our own money and do it. 
and we did not only take the line to Patongo and Kalongo and and and, 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 and Abim, but we went even further to the Lamos and so on. So therefore, I really want to advise the political leaders to know that Oko Marom has positive consequences. Now, in my upcountry tour, I've discovered one problem which I've been talking about, but not insisting, because that's my way of working. I, um, I don't want to force people to do what I think. I would rather persuade them. The other, just the other day, we were in Moroto, and we were looking at the UBOS figures. The primary seven completion rate in the whole of Uganda apparently is 38%. The children who go to the primary school and finish P7 are only 38 out of 100, which means that 62 go back to the village. They don't finish P7. And in the case of Karamoja, we found it was only six children out of 100 who finished primary seven. And you remember during the elections, I was talking about it. Because when we introduced UPE in 1997, the idea was everybody to go to school, universal education, universal primary school education. And the reason why these children drop out is because of the school charges. I've been telling you about this so many times, begging, talking, as if I want people to come and work on my farm or do my, me a favor. So now, this is a big problem for the country. Find that children, and you can see it in the, in the elections, I was talking about it. In the primary school, the enrollment is 10 million something, 10 point something, almost 11. But in the secondary schools, only 2 million. Where have the other eight gone? Of course, in the 10 million, it did not come out that many of them drop out. Of course, many of them drop out. They don't go to the secondary school. So therefore, I, I call on the political class especially the NRM people, to say no, we must budget for free and even, even compulsory primary school education. We budget for it and we stop these teachers greedy for money, collecting money from these children in government schools. This is what I wanted from the beginning, but I can't do it alone. You want to do it wrong to me. From 1997, this was my, my, my wish. When we introduced UPE, the idea was everybody should finish second education. So we should not be talking of two million children in the second school, we should be talking of 10 million in the second school, because second school years are S1 to S6, 60 years, they're almost the same as P1 to P7. So why should you have 10 million, almost 11 million in primary and only 2 million in, in second? Where have the others gone? So we will not do it this year because this budget is now finished, but in the next financial, two, one or two financial years, we should really work and insist 
on a free and compulsory primary, maybe even with secondary education, and stop all these fellows who are looking for money through education. Go to, get out, go in the primary school, uh, private schools and look for money there. Not in the government ones. This is disgusting. Sending children out of school because they are looking for money, for allowances, for what? It's really disgusting. Now, the other big issue, because people talk of problems, problems, but me, I, I, I really, none of them, I, I'm used to problems. And when I see what you call problems, I say, Bambi, these ones don't know what problems look like. I feel very sorry. But for me, the real, real problem for Uganda and Africa is lack of food. If there is no food, no mhogo. When I food I mean when I say food I mean mhogo. I mean bananas. I mean akalo. Ah, if the akalo was not there, I don't know what I would do. I mean uh, maize. Maize. Maize is important for kaunga, for animal feeds, for fish, fish meals, beans. Of course, milk, amati, amati munang, beef. These are the ones that would do. I would not sleep if, if, if we had if we had uh, no none uh, none or very little of these. Of course, sugar and other things. If, if spaghetti doesn't come, ha, those who eat spaghetti, I don't know how they do it. You try to put it in their mouth, it is refusing to come in. Why don't you do a no-go? You know a no-go? A, a no-go. When, when uh, I mean, I'm going to get the piece of caro and uh, does it like this and puts a hole. <laughs> what do they call it in Euro? In Euro? This one, the Oman, Oman is a former law, it doesn't mean anything. Somebody left me, please. Oh, oh. I'm behaving and parliamentary. Very sorry, very sorry. In Parliament, they don't say they don't use it. I, I'll find out and tell you next time. So, as long as Uganda is producing enough food, there is no problem we cannot solve. But the danger to the food is number uh, number one some some laziness this 39 percent of the homes who are who are not whom want to under parish model to say please join the money economy and produce for the stomach and for the pocket but the other danger can be lack of rain or unreliable rain so that's why in the in the in, in our budgeting there is now something about irrigation but in the future budgets i would like us to do more for the irrigation so that we stabilize agriculture we do, there's no possibility of, of of shortage of food even if the rain has got some uh but irrigation means water. 
So we go to the environment. To the environment. So please, all of us must tell the, these people, especially the ones, the, the, the old problem of the wetlands, which was created by the British, was in Busoga and in Bukedi and in Kigezi, where they misled our people to go in the wetlands, thinking that that is a, a, a good thing to do. These ones, I have a program to get them out by compensating them because they were misled. They, did, they didn't do it themselves, they were misled by the government. But in the other areas, the people are going to the wetlands, are going there by themselves and against our appeals. And I, I demand that all these people get out of the wetlands unconditionally. We don't have to, to negotiate because they knew it was not right. They insist. Even here in Kampala, I see some of them encroaching a little bit in Rubiji swamp and these other swamps. So therefore, once we bring back our water, because 20% of Uganda is under fresh water, we are so lucky. Then we shall be able to irrigate easily and have a secure agriculture, and that can give us problems to solve other problems. If there is no, if there is a shortage of uh, cooking oil from uh, Malaysia, we can easily replace it. In fact, people have come up. Very soon we shall be exporting that cooking oil instead of importing from Malaysia. So many people are, are involved with sunflower, with the sim sim, with, the, with, with palm oil. Very, very soon you will see that Uganda will be a big exporter. The only problem we may not easily solve is the problem of wheat because we don't have, a, 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 in Capitola they try to grow wheat, but it's, the, the, I don't think the land is enough. I will talk with the people of agriculture, whether wheat needs cold climate or what, that, I have never really bothered with wheat myself, I've never studied it. Then on petroleum, in the next few years, we shall have our own petroleum, as you know. But of course, even when we have our own petroleum, the price, we, we cannot undersell our, our petroleum. It will have to be at par with the world price minus transport. So, yes, it somehow deals with it, but not, not entirely with fear we may have to. I think the, the real answer to expensive petroleum is rail transport. If we repair our railway to Pakwach, like the minister is saying, and we transport many of the things on the railway, then the demand for fuel, for petrol will go down and, and diesel, at least for, for cargo. And later on with, with Kasese, that is the, the real answer to the problem of high petroleum pr prices. So I congratulate the minister, but I'm glad you have not killed me when I have uh, worked, I have boasted a bit about the achievements of the NRM. Okay, similar. See, in I tell you, don't you see how much better off we are? A
Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for laying down the various projects and the programs that you intend to implement during the financial year 2022-2023. I sincerely want to thank my very able and active members of parliament for ensuring that this day comes to reality. Thank you so much for working tirelessly, for ensuring that the day comes to reality. You've had honorable members as executive impacts on implementation of the budget from 1st July 2022 is our noble duty to do our oversight role. So as to ensure that the funds that have been allocated are being used for intended use and there is value for money. Mr. President, as has been the case before, thank you for having a clear vision of where the country is moving and championing this vision with commitment and dedication. And we're also happy that you've talked about free education and members of parliament, our first priority in 2023-2024 should be budgeting for free education. I want, I once again want to thank you, Excellency, General Yowe Kaguta Museveni, for fulfilling your obligation of tabling the budget for the financial year 2022-2023. The rest is now left to the technical team. Whereas it has always been our practice to meet and interact after such an important occasion like today, the current circumstances do not permit us to do so because COVID is still with us. <laughs> COVID is still with us. We can interact when we are having the workshop. You'll have everything at your exposure. In a special way, honorable members, honorable members, when the speaker is speaking, keep quiet. <laughs> honorable members, in a special way, I want to thank Mama, Mama Janet, for accompanying Your Excellency to come and give this budget. Thank you so much. You make us, the women of Uganda, proud. The house is adjourned to 5th July 2022 at 2 p.m. The anthems.
Uh, Please remain in your seats. The budget. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for watching. Uh, it has been me behind the machines, uh, Ben. And uh, I really must say that thank you so much for being there on the chat. Um, those of you who have been chatting, uh, it's it's really great that you've been part of this. Uh, it makes us feel good. Uh, it makes us uh, continue to to bring more content. Uh, that's a sign of support that uh, will always and always uh, uh, give us the morale to do uh, and to improve better things. You know, like when we bring out a content for you. Well, uh, just in case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And uh, there is already a membership button there that you can uh, press join to become a, a member of our channel. And from there, you can choose at what level you, you want to become a member to this channel. Well, uh, continue with your comments because uh, the next time when we are reviewing the budget, uh, we shall be uh, definitely touching on some of your questions in the comment uh, at, of today's video. So uh, briefly, I'll be uh, showing a few um, comments that, that came through uh, to, to, to our channel uh, from our members, uh, our members in the chat, our members on the live stream uh, that has been able to, uh, you know, stick with us probably right from the beginning up to now. Well, um, I'll be showing a few of that and uh, please um, make sure that you, you keep more coming as I put uh, some rolling right away. We're going to start with the first one. Uh, this one just, um, Albert Alboy, he said, uh, go Matia. I think that was the time he was beginning to read. He just said, uh, go Matia, that is uh, the minister, Kasaija. And then there is uh, one who is called Kasali uh, Joshua. Uh, he said that, uh, he said, hello, and uh, Hello back, <laughs> hope you're doing well. And then uh, we also have one here with the name Ninsilima. Uh, Ninsilima uh, Flavia, 
uh, hope for the fair price dealing and um, address inflation, yes. Um, yeah, sure, we, we, we shall be having a, a review on the budget soon, and I hope you will still be part of this. Then here we have uh, Kasaria Joshua again. He said, no new taxes to be introduced this year. Uh, wash hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joshua. And then we also have on our chat, um, Chelang, Chelangat uh, Cisco. He said, okay, Papa. I think he was he was touched at some point with probably something that uh, uh, was mentioned that really was in his interest. And um, also here we have the same guy, his coach uh, Chalangat. He's saying, why have they forgotten primary teachers? Oh dear. That is something that I think uh, we shall be touching it as well in our review. Uh, for the budget. Um, then uh, this uh, immaculate uh, Ninsima is saying warmer primary teachers. I think he's agreeing with Chelangat. And then uh, that was actually, those are, those are the few uh, comments that we had uh, throughout the entire uh, budget reading. Uh, thank you so much. Un Maguaronyo Leba wila ni guak no pedo katma leng to twal one of four to twal nan wani chakeya chakne ni o kere wa kumbit inini uh wa four to twal nan wa nyo chung kedwa i ila kwa tv kidong in magwa nyo iti nan wa tian ma chiel ma foot pi subscribing button ma i subscribing channel ma megwa di and subscribe button enoni wek ni amala chen ka wi beneno uh pu will ni deo lang any wek ni amala chen uh kawa kelo videos ma nyen nyo wa tika kelo jam ma nyen yung botu no uh notification bin bori uh directly uh, to your phone, kadong in a chow nano gin manyen, and umano one waker ka enini. Um, kumbi di bedong, uh, you met berla member mela kwe TV benatie, ma in a ramacher chano ma megwa, chi ka inano kamaki joini join, in a ramacher kuno, chi a dollar member, kuno in a ramo yako, rom ma mene ma initi you kere. Uh, Pibere la memba i, i, i la kwe TV. Je ma beju tie mano ka initi la memba me la kwe TV wan wa miyo bot in. Um, konoto uh, pewi will ni chok uh, chok watigi pie modilu and mobi time man turumelu rem ikom uh, mobi beri kin uh, West Nile uh, ki acholi players mano gubi Time anonu bi time wa iarua mano la kwa TV bana bi beru kuno kuno bi beru ka broadcasting live match mano bi time ikin uh, uh, man turmelu rem yes uh, we shall be broadcasting um, live friendly match between uh, West Nile uh, players and then uh, Chole uh, players. Association that will take place uh, on the 16th uh, of this month, a few days away from now. So don't forget because we shall be bringing for you the live broadcasts right uh, from the stadium of Ondubakara, Ondupakara. <laughs> you know that uh, it sometimes uh, it's not very easy to pronounce some of these words. Uh, Anyway, it's called Stadium of Light, I think. Yeah, so I'll be bringing you more and more. So uh, thank you so much once again for watching. Uh, we have come to the end of our broadcast for today. My name is Diben, Ladid Diben Festo. And it has been great. I must say this. It has been great having you throughout this chat. Catch you soon for more programs. Bye-bye.